Well, good morning, church. Yes, it is 10 o'clock. We are so glad that you're here. Uh, if you are visiting with us this morning, we are really happy that you're with us this morning. And if you're watching online, thank you for being part of our worship service as well. Let's all begin, stand, and let's sing this beautiful song, Behold Our God. Who has held the oceans in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises to rejoice. Who has given counsel to the Lord? Who can question any of his words? Who can teach the one who knows all things? Who can fathom all his wondrous deeds? Behold our God seated on his throne. Come let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come let us adore Him. Who has felt the nails upon His hands, bearing all the guilt of sinful man? God eternal, humble to the grave, Jesus, Savior, risen now to reign. Behold our God, seated on his throne. Come, let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come, let us adore him. You will reign forever. You will reign forever. You will reign forever. You will reign forever. Behold our God. Seated on his throne, come let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come let us adore him. Behold our God, seated on his throne, come let us adore him. Behold our King, nothing can compare. Come let us adore Him. Amen. Be seated, please. Fresh. To know what you have done for us. To know that you have sent your one and only Son. The righteous for the unrighteous. So that we may be the righteousness of Christ. Father God, we are humbled by your beauty, and by your love. 
Father, as we look to your kingdom desires, change our hearts. Give us a vision that would glorify you. We pray these things in your son's most holy and precious name. Amen. Good morning, Rockwell and Bren. What a great song to start off with, right? Um, a number of things uh, that we want to hit on very quickly. One is great day in May. All right, great day in May. There we go. All right. Be sure uh, there are plenty of these. Take these with you. Put them on your refrigerator. Hand them to your neighbors or your co-workers or whoever. And, and, uh, and he, here's the deal. Come lunch with us. All right. Now, they may confuse what you just said and think you're going to take them to lunch. Well, that's okay, too. Do that. All right. Um, but uh, we, as we look towards relaunching, it is a super exciting time and uh, truly thrilling. Um, I know yesterday we had a great um, children's ministry meeting that Tyler led, and uh, I think uh, Lisa said there were about 10 ladies um, there, uh, along with Tyler, that are looking to reopen our children's classes. Um, I know not all of you who want to teach um, were able to be there, and we want to always cast the net, okay? Um, and so... There are some sign-up sheets over here. Um, if you are interested in working with any of our age groups in our children's ministry, teaching or being a teacher's helper or being trained as a teacher, sign up. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to recruit um, you also for our guest relations ministry. Um, we need... Um, greeters. We need parking lot greeters. We need folks that are going to help people get from point A to point B. Um, and so we need under, on our guest relations ministry, please sign up. Um, hospitality ministry. All right. Some of you are wondering uh, what that ministry is. It is the Hebrews ministry. Hebrews coffee. All right, there we go. For some of you, some of you are going, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Coffee, Garrett. It's okay. Coffee. All right, and donuts. Yeah, haha. All of my uh, law enforcement there appreciated that. Um, so eventually, we're going to look towards those again. Um, praise God for Shipley's donuts, by the way. Um, and so there's a number of things that we're going to keep rebooting and, and relaunching. We need you. Okay? This is a place that we don't come to sit, watch, and go. Okay? This is not a spectator sport. Okay? We are all players. We are all on the field. Now, for some of you, you're asking the question, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Hi, I'm Garen. I'll help you. Right? I'll help you. And for some of you, you're going, you may even be saying, I, I'm, I'm not really even an official member. Hi, I'm Garen. I'll help you. Okay, we'll talk about what that means and everything. And so there's a lot of things that you're going to be seeing that is super exciting um, about that. Um, just a few minutes ago, I had uh, one of our folks um, ask, what about the air conditioners? All right, how, um, and his specific question was, how do I donate to that? I, I said, man, it is super easy. Um, you write a check, all right, you put in the memo, um, air conditioners, and you put it in the box, you hand it to me, you hand it to someone who looks like they know what they're doing, and I bet they'll get it to the right place, okay? You can also do that on PayPal, okay? You can go to PayPal. There's a memo thing on PayPal. If you want to do that, you should be able to do that. At this point, um, praise God, we are at $27,475. Wow. Praise God for that. Um, we so we are truly thankful for your faithfulness, um, and we just are going to continue to move forward and do great things through the power of God. 
Let's continue with our worship. Thank you for being here. Let's all stand and sing. Let there be glory and honor and praises. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and honor. Glory and honor to Him. Let there be glory and honor and praises. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory and honor. Glory and honor to Him. Be seated, please. Brightly beam our Father's mercy from His light house evermore. But to us He gives the keeping of the lights along the shore. Let the Lord lights be burning, send a gleam across the waves. Some poor fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Dark the night of sin has settled, loud the angry billows roar. Eager eyes are watching, longing for the lights along the shore. Let the Lord lights be burning, send a gleam across the waves. Some poor fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. Trim your feeble lamp, my brother. Some poor sailor, tempest-tossed, trying now to make the harbor in the darkness may be lost. Let the Lord lights be burning, send a gleam across the waves. Some poor fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save. He left the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Welcome. <laughs> wow, it is so good to see you guys. We're so glad you're here. God bless you. That is wonderful. <clears throat> Let's go back. He left the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny was the lonely hill of Golgotha there to lay down his life for me. If that isn't love, the ocean is dry. There's no stars in the sky, and the sparrow can't fly. 
if that isn't love, then heaven's a myth. There's no feeling like this, if that isn't love, even in death he remembers the thief hanging by his side. He spoke with love and compassion, then he took him to paradise, if that isn't love. The ocean is dry, there's no stars in the sky, and the sparrow can't fly. If that isn't love, then heaven's a myth. There's no feeling like this. If that isn't love, morning everyone when I was asked to prepare the thought for this this morning's communion I had a lot of thoughts and ideas go through my mind uh, and I thought I would like one of the things that came to my mind was Ecclesiastes 3 and the reason that came to my mind is when I'm preparing for communion, I have a lot of different thoughts and feelings going through my mind. I think so often I'm conditioned to be uh, silent or stoic and not have any emotions. It's a serious event, but I don't think that's true. In Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time for everything under the sun. There's a time to be sad, and we should be sad because our choices are the one who put our Savior on the cross. And there's a time to be glad because he didn't make that choice to die for us and we have eternal life and the hope for eternal life with him. It's a time to tear down. A time to tear down our old self. We're a living sacrifice on that cross and the living sacrifice oftentimes wants to get down off that cross. So we need to tear down our old self. But it's also a time to build up because we are a new creature in Christ. Ecclesiastes kind of brings a different perspective on this ceremony, this thing that we're all about to partake of who are Christians. There may be mixed feelings. There's a time for joy and laughter because this is a good time. And there's a time for being somber because this is a serious time. So as we partake of this, let's consider Ecclesiastes and the different emotions that might be going through our minds as we partake of this gracious gift that God's given us. Our most gracious and holy Father, we thank you for your blessings that you've given us, Lord. We know and believe that you died on that cross. And more importantly, we believe that you were raised on the third day to give us hope for eternal life, to take away our fear of death and dying, knowing that we have life with you eternally. We ask and pray as we partake of this emblem, this bread representing your body, that we remember the many things you did on this earth to show us the way to live, to be holy. And we ask this in your whole, in your, in your name, Jesus. the Savior, what joys express, his eyes 
eyes are mercy. His word is rest for each tomorrow, for yesterday there is a Savior who lies our way. Jesus, God, as we become for you again, we will take this emblem, this blood representing, this juice representing your blood, Lord Jesus. We know and believe that it's blood that gives life, and we know your life, your blood gives eternal life, Lord. We ask and pray as we partake of this, that we remember the sacrifice and the shedding of your blood. And let it bring us sadness and joy. And all the different motions you intended for us to experience at this time as we commune with you. In your name we pray. Amen. There is a Savior. What joys express. His eyes are mercy. His word is rest for each tomorrow, for yesterday there is a Savior who lights our Would you stand as we sing this song before our lesson this morning? Precious cornerstone, sure foundation, you are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe you're all to us. Only Son of God sent from heaven. Hope and mercy at the cross. You are everything. You're the promise. Jesus, you are all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. When this passing world is over, we will see you face to face. And forever we will worship Jesus, you are all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. You're all to us. You're all to us. You're all to us. Jesus, you are all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. 
Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. We believe you're all to us. Be seated, please. Amen. Good morning again. Great day in May. All right. Um, see you here. See you here. See you guys there. Oh, my goodness. It, it, again, I'm going to say it until we start back, and then even after, it is every Sunday is like Reunion Sunday, all right? And uh, especially, it's always great to see our, our little ones come in, and you go, oh, my goodness, look at how big Rosebud is. Um, and uh, we watch, we, we stalk people on Facebook, right? Or at least that's what I do. I don't, I don't hardly ever comment on anything or check I like it or I don't like it or, or you know, I love you or even I hate you. You know, I generally don't do that. Um, <clears throat> but I watch people and you go, oh my goodness, look at that. Um, and so it is fantastic. Um, you know, I mentioned the sign-up sheets. One of the important things that we want to be about is really what we just sang about, and it is because of what Jesus has done, because of his love for me, I love you. Because of the way that Jesus has served me, I serve you. Because he set aside his own rights and his own desires and his own opportunities, I set aside my desires and my own rights and my own opportunities for you, okay? Now, can you imagine a church that every single person that was a part of that church started with that premise? Can you imagine that? That the A construct, the first part of it was because of what Jesus has done. Not, then I deserve this certain thing. But I have my head on a swivel looking of how, for how I can serve others. How can I love better because Jesus loved me perfectly? Right? How can I serve better because Jesus served me perfectly? Can you imagine a church like that? I can. I believe as I stand with the Apostle Paul and what we have been studying through Galatians that God has the right and the power to change the heart of man and to present and to, uh, and, and to develop and to, to, to invent a bride for his son that looks like that. For the glory of Christ. You know, one of those sign-up sheets over there is, is for our attended nursery. Right? Some of our ones that would have been in there when we all shut down are too old for that now, and they'll be going off to Bible hour. But if you look around, we've still got some little buds some little marigolds, and we have some little uh, Delilah slash DJ slash Lily, okay? We have some little uh, Averys back there. We have a little Nora, and we have a little one on its way. We have a couple of those, Right? We have a little Emma Rose, and they need a place to go 
and be blessed by loving hands and loving hearts so that mamas and daddies can come in to our worship assembly and go, ah. Oh. <laughs> I'll give you five bucks for that one, Annie. <clears throat> Amen. That's right. Now, obviously, they're going to jump in as well. Can we do that? Can we walk out today and have our nursery totally filled, ready to go? We'll train you. We'll teach you. We're going to have some guidelines that are going to be up in a part of that, as we will for Bible Hour and all of those things. All right. Are we in? Are we in? Are we in? All right. All right. And by the way, if it's not filled up, I'm going to start asking next Sunday morning, and I'm going to call you out in public. <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. All right. Let's get into this. If you have your Bibles, turn to Galatians chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. And we are finishing up Galatians today. And it has been, for me, it has been an exciting um, study because it just lays the foundation. Church, if we miss Galatians, if we miss the message of Galatians, then we, we need to fold it up and pack it in because we're just another social service club. I can't say that more straight. If we miss the message of Galatians, then we're just another social service club. But I also believe about our church and about the body of Christ, the true body of Christ, that we haven't. The message of Galatians that Paul brings down is you are not good and seeking to do good things so that God will love you. You are not doing good things to prove yourself to God. You are not trying to buy your way into heaven by your good deeds. God in his holiness and in his righteousness, in the best sense of this beautiful word, condescended, power knelt and sent Jesus Christ to earth to become sin for you. All of your bad deeds were put on him and he gave you his righteousness. God moved first. Paul beats the drum on this. And he reminds us that anyone... who says, well, that's good news, but I need to help God by my good deeds to help Jesus save me, does not help the gospel, but actually destroys it. So Paul's big questions in Galatians... Is Jesus powerful enough to save us? And is the Spirit of God powerful enough to change us? And the resounding question has to be for the believer, yes. Now, there may be some of you that are struggling with that question. You know, I know God can save those people, but I'm not good enough to be saved. I've had this conversation. 
You know, I come to church, but I know I'll never, you know, uh, I, you know, God can't save me. Now to that, here's what I say to people. Stop being God and let God be God. The great truth of Scripture that, that, that is the preeminent truth is God is God and I am not. No one has ever argued with me when I say this. Um, do you think you are a better God than God? No one has ever actually ever said, yes, I do. I think I could be a better God than God. No one has ever actually said that. But in our, sometimes the way we live, sometimes we, that's what we think. Now, the other side of that is, I am so good that God is lucky to have me. See, there's a balance in between those. And the balance is this. I know that in my own power, I rebelled and have rebelled and I am or was an enemy of God, but God lovingly sent His one and only Son to take all of my evil and kill it on the cross with Him and then be put into a grave and be raised again so that for all of those who would believe in Him, we have the right to be His children. Now we get to Galatians chapter 6. And Paul is on the bell lap of Galatians. And that bell is ringing and he is running to a close. And he says some really powerful things. Read with me. Galatians chapter 6, the first 10 verses. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. One who is taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So again, Paul is not pointing to the idea of this is how you get saved. What he is saying here is because you are saved, this is what you are to do. This is how saved people live their lives and serve others for the glory of God. This is what it looks like. Here it is. My wife and I, Kenry, by the way, uh, she's um, up in Stillwell, Oklahoma. Her 102-year-old grandmother uh, passed away last evening. Uh, last night, about nine o'clock, and uh, it was a a beautiful passing. Um, thank you, by the way, for all of your notes and your your concerns and your prayers for that. Um, 
one of the conversations that Kenry and I have during the week is normally, what are we doing this week? In the morning, oftentimes it's for me because I need to know what I'm supposed to be doing that day, right? Other than going to work, doing my job, all of that. What do you need me to do today? I have a running list of honeydews on my device that she has access to, and she just adds them on, right? And which is very helpful for me because I forget, right? And I love checking things off, right? So here's what I want us to grab a hold of. Our Christian checklist does not come before salvation, but after salvation. Does that make sense? I don't do my honeydew checklist for Kenry so that she will love me. I do my honeydew checklist for Kenry because she does love me. Now, what's the other part of that? So, from my part, I then check those off because guess what? I love her too. Does that make sense? Are we tracking here? You see, salvation is a positional change that causes the heart to change and therefore causes the actions to change. So now, two things, very quickly. Number one, here's what we look at. So if this is how saved people live their lives and serve others for the glory of God, there's two things that Paul hits here. Number one, um, to sum up what I just read, bless everyone every chance you get. All right, can you repeat that with me? I'm going to say it, and then you're going to say it. Bless everyone every chance you get. Bless everyone every chance you get. All right, let's say that again. Y'all did good. Bless everyone every chance you get. Now, let's start at home. All right, let's start at home. How can you and I bless those that are closest to us. I want you to think about that. Now, there's some papers out there. There may even be some pens around. You may have a pen. Take that connection card and start writing down. How can you bless today those that you live with? How can you bless those that you come in contact with? You know, I used to watch Sesame Street years ago. Um, <clears throat> my favorite was always Big Bird. Um, second was, 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 uh, was Grover. Uh, but I do remember this story, or this song, had to do with neighbors. Who are the people in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood? Oh, who are the people in your neighborhood? They're the people that you meet when you're walking down the street. They're the people that you meet each day. Don't. Don't. All right. See what Sesame Street does to you? It just breaks your brain, I guess. Who are the people in your neighborhood that you can bless? You see, Paul gets to that last verse where he says, and most of all to the household of faith, of course, to the household of faith, but that doesn't exclude everyone else that we come in contact with. Because in blessing others, we are not building an honorary shrine to ourselves. But because we are Christians, we are building a pulpit for the gospel. 
So under this, number one, verse one, he says, restore those who need it. Now this is specifically written to the church. Isn't it great to be in a church where everyone is perfect? Right? Isn't it great? But you know, Paul says there's a responsibility here. One is we are to live to the glory of God. Um, and when we don't, we are to expect a fellow believer to come alongside and say, Brother or sister, you're not living to the glory of God. You have forgotten the gospel. There's no reason to speak that way. There's no reason to yell at people. There's no reason to poke people in the eye or even in the chest. There's no reason to tell that joke. There's no reason to be a general jerk to everybody. Right? Why? Because of the gospel. And I'm telling you this because I love you. Gently and honor. Can, you, can we be a part of that? Can we be that kind of a church? And then what is the response when someone comes to me, when my brother Rex comes to me and puts his arm around me and says, Brother, I know Rex loves me. I don't have to defend myself. Did you know that? You know who defends me? Jesus Christ in the gospel. Why? Because I am saved. I'm not trying to get saved. Restore those who need it, but do it gently and lovingly. My response is thank you for seeing me and for loving me enough. Secondly, bear one another's burdens. Head on a swivel. All right, head on a swivel. I remember when we, had, when we had little babies and we walked into Shannon Oaks Church of Christ and there were two elders' wives who met Kenry at the door with, with and, and, and man, I, I, I love me some Emma, our Emma. I, I love all Emmas, by the way, but, but I especially love my own Emma, Emma. Um, <clears throat> but woo, her first year was tough. If she wasn't on Kenry's hip, she cried. All right, she, Kenry even lost her, running around the house looking for Emma, and Emma was on her hip. All right, but these elders, el elders wives, Kenry would walk in and D. Elliot and share severe, would make a beeline and take Emma and do the elder's wife dance in the back with Emma. And Kenry was able to go, ah. Oh. You know, that seems like such a simple thing. But you know, that impacted Kenry unto this day. That's why she loves babies. That's why she's a ridiculous grandmother. All right? To the, in the best sense possible. Right? Because those two ladies saw Kenry's burden. I've already talked about nursery. But there's other things. Maybe financial Maybe other struggles, maybe grief. Maybe there's a habitual sin issue. Bear one another's burden. It doesn't mean take it away from them, but stand up under it with them. And then thirdly, if that's not enough, Paul just blankets everything. How can you do good to everyone? You see someone walk in, greet them. As you approach them, they may go, ah! Right? Wave at them. Speak to them. Honor them. Let them sit in your seat. Now, I'm, I'm going to get really personal, okay, and really practical. On the great day in May... We are going back into our auditorium. And there are going to be some people come in that have never been in our auditorium. It is okay for them to sit in your seat. Okay? It is okay for them to sit in your seat. Amen? 
You know why we're here? We're not just here for those who are already here. You know why we're here? We're here for those that are not here yet. Right? It is okay for them to sit in your seat. Find a way to do good to everyone. And when they ask why, why is this church so loving? Let me tell you about the gospel. When you have a front yard pancake dinner on your front lawn at your house and you invite all of your neighbors, right? By the way, if you'll do that, I'll buy you a griddle and I'll buy you pancake mix and syrup and everything to go with it, all right? When you do that and they go, why would you do this? Can I tell you about Jesus? Do good to everyone. All right, then secondly, so bless everyone every chance you get. Secondly, boast only in Jesus Christ. Read with me really quick. <clears throat> See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. Paul never wrote with his own hand. Very seldom did he ever write with his own hand. He used what was called an amanuensis. He, he, he spoke and someone wrote. And you see that over and over. But here, Paul, it's, it's like he, uh, uh, you, you know, we've been on camera and some of you have sat at home. And it, it would be like in this moment that Paul got so excited that he ran right up to the camera. This close to the camera. And if, if, I, if I was a little more agile, I might do that for all of those at home. And he stuck his face in the camera and he said, see with what big letters I'm writing? He's putting exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. This is so important. This is the foundation of all things with faith and church. Here it is. And then he continues on. And he says, it is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who would force you to be circumcised and only in order that they may be persecuted for the cross uh, of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. So they may brag about everything that they have done. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. And the passage continues on. Here is the point. Anytime that you look up and look out and say, look at how blessed I am, the next words should be, praise God. Look what Jesus has done. When anyone comes to you and says to you, you are such a good guy or such a good woman, you say, but I can't let you say that without me telling you that Jesus is so good. Can I tell you my story? But can I tell you the story of Jesus? Because I can't tell you the, my story without telling you the story of Jesus. You see, that's Paul's point. We boast only in Christ Jesus. So the question... Is God, is Jesus powerful enough to save you? Now another question to that has to be this. Am I saved? Paul has been abundantly clear. How are we saved? By the power of Jesus Christ. If you have a question mark at the end of either one of those 
There is business that you need to do with God today. Come talk to me. Talk to someone around you. And say, what does it take to actually be a Christian? What does it take? Well, Paul is really clear. Respond to the gospel. That's what it takes. Respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, part of that response for, for uh, here is, is, yes, believe. And that's it. And that's a done deal. But then we have a physical response. And it's, which, it's, it's when we respond and we have a beautiful ceremony that connects us to the death, the burial, and the resurrection. It's called baptism. And I always encourage, some people are afraid to be up in front of people. I always encourage people, hey, there's no place, no room that you can be in in which you are more loved than when you are being baptized. So let's do it publicly and with as many people as can see it, okay? Now, if, you are, or if that freaks you out or whatever, yeah, we can do it with a smaller crowd too. But the bottom line is this. I want to be connected to the love of Jesus Christ, and so I'll do whatever he says. Because he's loved me so well. And then there's another, the, the other question that we have to affirm is this. Is Jesus' spirit enough to change us? And the answer has to be yes. If you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, as my brother Michael said, you are a new creation. The old has gone. The old has left the building. And you should see change in your heart and in your life. What a beautiful picture. I'm going to pray. And then if there is any way in which we can help you this morning, if today is your day to confess Jesus Christ as your one and only Lord and Savior, we want to be here to receive that. If you need prayers for any reason whatsoever, we are here to be that loving presence because God sent his one and only son to be that loving presence. Let's pray. Father God, I pray this morning that you will remove our hearts of stone and replace them with, our hearts, of, with hearts of flesh that only you can do. Father, I thank you for every individual that is here, young and, and, and older. Father, I pray that you will do a miracle in this church, that we will be a light, a city on a hill for your gospel. For your glory. Father, I pray that as we look towards this great day in May, that you will put in our hearts a, a preparedness for the kingdom work that you are calling us to do. Father, we trust you, we love you, and we put our faith fully in you. And let us be clear to tell everyone that we love Jesus. Because he first loved us. Again, we love you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and sing. Come right now if you, can, if you need us for anything. Have thine affections been nailed to the cross? Is thy heart right with God? Does thou count all things for Jesus but loss? Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly, right in the sight of God. Hast thou dominion or self and or sin? Is thy heart right? with God. Over all evil without and within is thy heart right with God. Is thy heart right with God. Washed in the crimson flood, 
cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly, right in the sight of God. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that you are faithful to all those who seek you and do your word. As we leave this place today, Lord, may we do good to all who we encounter this week, especially to those in the household of faith. And for your son, Jesus, we are so grateful for your sacrifice for us. And in his name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Ain't no rock, ain't no rock, cry in my face. Sometimes I'm allowed to glorify his holy name.